Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd and this is my review of episode 5 of season 2 of Star Trek Picard called Fly Me to the Moon which was all over the place, they were jumping from scene to scene, there were different scenes uh, spliced together I guess it's good for pacing because this way they could kind of skim over the things they wanted to show us without actually showing us the full scene so I guess it's a good thing for the pacing of it or maybe it was done to hide the fact that the dialogue itself would be very silly if you actually show the full thing. Like that speech Dr. Sung made to that committee would have been really silly if we saw the whole thing. So maybe by jumping from scene to scene and only showing us snippets of it, that makes us imagine that maybe the full speech was much better than what we actually saw in the little we saw of it. So I'm not sure what I feel about it. I guess it's a good thing for pacing to splice uh, things up and to get through it faster. So that's the only good thing about it. And the way they brought all the actors back to basically play new characters is also very strange, especially because it wasn't yet explained. And it seems like just a cheap trick to just get all the same actors back, not knowing what to do with the actual characters they played in season 1, and so instead they have them play new characters, and so it makes it all feel kind of like a soap opera, kind of a very cheap and lazy way to bring the same actors back without any explanation. And it was especially annoying with the actress who played Laris, who now plays a new character who is a Watcher, the same kind as Gary Seven in the original series, and that's something they referenced heavily in this episode, without actually explaining anything or adding anything to it. To those who don't know, Gary Seven was in the TOS episode Assignment Earth, in which the Enterprise actually traveled to the past on a mission to study the past, which is kind of odd in itself that they seem to have deliberately gone into the past in that episode, but I guess they were only there as observers, to see how the Earth survived the near uh, nuclear catastrophe of the Cold War and all of that, and then they encountered Gary Seven, who was a human from the same time period that they were in, so he was not a time traveler, and he was apparently recruited by much more advanced aliens, who gave him special abilities and special equipment, and sent him back to Earth to ensure that humanity doesn't destroy itself with nuclear weapons, but there was no mention of any time traveling going on, so those aliens didn't know the future, they simply knew that the Earth is at that stage of development in which they might destroy themselves in a nuclear war, and so they sent this guy to try to prevent it. So his mission was about uh, humanity overall, he was not there to protect uh, individuals, and yet here they kind of retcon it by saying that the Watchers are there, to help protect the destiny of certain individuals and that makes no sense since they are not from the future and even in this episode it's stated that she's not from the future even though she's played by the same actress who played Laris which they never explain in the episode and I wonder how the hell will they explain it because they specifically say that she hates time travelers, it's not about time travel and yet somehow these aliens who sent these supervisors somehow know about the destiny of specific individuals so that's not how it was like in TOS and so it doesn't make any sense yet and they never reveal anything about who these aliens are or how they know the destiny of individuals none of this is explained it's not explained why does she look like a human version of Laris who is actually a watcher for those aliens and we don't see any black cats either I think this character should have actually been called Isis like that cat in the original series because in the end of that episode of TOS that cat actually transformed into a humanoid woman and I remember saying in one of my reviews of Star Trek Discovery that maybe Book's cat Grudge should have been revealed to be some kind of shape-shifting alien from a superior alien species. Maybe that could have been a clever tie-in, so obviously it would have been very goofy and silly, but I think at this point the only way to enjoy Star Trek Picard is by looking at it like a comedy, like a parody of Star Trek, because if we look at it seriously, it would be absolutely ridiculous. Especially that scene when they save Rios, that was uh, the point in which I almost banged my head against the wall at how many temporal violations they committed, saving all of his fellow prisoners. They let all of them go by the end and that really made me facepalm, and that really made me facepalm, especially since all of these guys from the future are all Starfleet officers or former officers in the case of Seven, so they all know about the temporal prime directive and even earlier in this season, Jurati explains it to them, so we cannot have any excuse of them not knowing the consequences, because Jurati told them about the butterfly effect that they shouldn't change anything in the past, because then they might create even a bigger disaster than the one they're trying to prevent, and yet they don't seem to listen to it, so 
previously, Rios had to be explained this, even though he's supposed to be a Starfleet captain, as we saw in the first episode of the season. He's a Starfleet captain, and one of the primary rules is the Prime Directive, and there's also the Temporal Prime Directive, and we've seen episodes before in which there is the Department of Temporal Investigations, who specifically told Cisco that his crew should have known about the temporal rules, about not getting involved in historical events, not trying to change the past, and so on. And yet Rios, who is a Starfleet captain, apparently has no knowledge of the Temporal Prime Directive and he constantly gets into trouble on the mission. And then Seven and Rafi abandon their main mission, which I remind you is to save the future of humanity and to save the entire universe because humanity commits genocide against multiple other species in the galaxy in the new evil timeline and that's what they're trying to prevent. And so they're literally trying to save trillions of people in the whole galaxy. And they only have three days to complete this mission to save the future because for some reason they jumped to just uh, three days before the event that changes everything. That's the same kind of logic like in uh, Terminator Genesis when Sarah Connor wanted to save humanity and she knew the exact date of when the nuclear war will start and so she chose to send herself to just 24 hours before that event. Not a week before, not a month before to have time to prepare to stop it. No, to the last 24 hours to save all of humanity and a few billion people. So the same thing here. They are on a mission to save trillions of people, but they only send themselves to three days before the event that uh, will be too late to change it after that. And then they get uh, sidetracked because Rios gets arrested for being a Mexican and is taken to be deported, even though in this time period, Whenever the authorities would arrest someone on the street without any idea, they're supposed to throw them into a sanctuary district, like what happened with Cisco and Bashir in 2024. But here they forgot all about that, and instead they're being taken to be deported. And Rafi and Seven abandon their primary mission, which is about saving humanity, because saving Rios is more important for them. Even though Rios is not taken to be executed, he's simply taken to be deported. So that he can always be found later. They can simply find him after saving all of humanity and then take him back. It's not such a big deal to abandon your primary mission which is about saving trillions of people, but no, saving Rios from being deported is more important for them. Let Rios spend a few days in prison or in Mexico or whatever, just pick him up later. You should be focusing on your main mission to save all of humanity which you forgot all about because saving Rios is more important. So they managed to track the bus which is taking Rios and the other prisoners to the border and then they say that they can actually beam Rios out. They have the means to do it. But they cannot do it because then uh, all those eyewitnesses who will see Rios disappearing, that might create butterflies in the timeline and change the timeline so they cannot do it. So then they decide to stop the bus and rescue Rios some other way. So they modify their tricorder to create an EMP that stops the bus. That's okay so far. We know that EMP waves can disable electronical systems and so the bus stops because of it. Then they go into the bus and they use the same EMP wave to knock the driver out. Because as we all know, EMP also makes people go unconscious. I guess that guy is a robot or something. So the EMP wave also knocks him out. And then the evil guard we saw earlier gets beaten up by Rios. And then they uncuff Rios and they're about to take him out of the bus. And I'm thinking, oh, now they will have to do the necessary evil. They will have to shut the door on all those other prisoners because they cannot change the timeline. They have to leave the bus and the guards in the same place for the prisoners to go to the same place as they were going originally because, as they mentioned themselves earlier, they cannot afford to change the timeline to create butterflies. So they will have a sad, dramatic scene in which Rios or the others will have to lock the door and to leave all the other sad prisoners there. And that will be a very sad and dramatic scene because it's a necessary evil kind of thing to protect the timeline. And then they will have to apologize to them and then leave them on the bus to preserve the original timeline. But of course, they cannot do that because then that will defeat the whole point they were making with all this uh, subplot of Rios getting arrested by the evil ICE officers and put into the evil deportation vehicle, taking him to the border because those guards are so evil to take these innocent people who came into the country illegally back to their own country. That is so evil. That's the whole message of this entire subplot. So even though they're supposed to be in the past to protect the timeline, to restore the original timeline, they now decide to release all of these prisoners. So they open the door, they uncuff all of them, and they allow all of them to run back into the United States. <laughs> and that was the point I realized 
there is no hope left for this show. There is no logic here anymore when they contradict their own dialogue from just a few minutes before that. When Rafi and Seven themselves were saying they cannot create butterflies. And that's why they couldn't just beam Rios out, even though they could. And instead they knock all the evil guards out and release all of the prisoners, not just Rios, because that will not create any butterflies. Having all these people who are supposed to be deported in the original timeline, having them go back into the United States is more important to do than to protect the timeline itself, which is the whole mission of this entire season. Then they all high five each other and Rios is all cheerful about it and allowing that other guy who was with him on the bus to escape and it's all smiles, it's all laughs, we even hear the Star Trek theme playing over it and I'm constantly thinking, Rios, you're a Starfleet officer, a Starfleet captain, you're supposed to be saving the timeline, that's the whole mission that you're on right now, why are you all changing the timeline in drastic waves? Of course you're saving people here, but you have no idea what it will cause in the future, those people are not supposed to be in the United States in the original time timeline and you allow them to be there and it's not just one person not just two people it's a whole bus full of criminals that you just released i realized that's the whole message they were trying to push with this scene but i think even the message itself i think would have been more powerful if instead of just releasing everyone if instead they had a sad dramatic scene in which they had to lock those guys back on the bus and not allow them to escape and then have like a sad moment of Rios being in tears about it or something, forcing himself to do this necessary evil because he knew he has to. That could have been so much better to push the same message they want to push, to show, oh, the, it's so sad those people had to be arrested, but we cannot allow them to escape because that will change the timeline and so all the bad things in the past should be allowed to happen the same way they did because we are not here to change the past. They could have had like a dramatic sad moment about all of this and maybe talk about it later to ponder about it. Oh, we could have saved those people. Why, why didn't we save them? And then Seven would say, we c couldn't afford to. I know it's sad, but uh, things have to play out the same way they did. And so I also wanted to save them, but we cannot do it. And so they could have played with that. They could have done it more and it would even push the same message they wanted to push in a much more effective way. And instead, no, they just release everyone without a second thought. There's not even any character questioning this decision. They all seem to be on board with it. Uh, Rafi and Seven and Rios, they're all happy, high-fiving each other about saving all those people who are supposed to get deported. And so they all change the timeline with this very action. How can they know that maybe this action of what they just did is what will cause the evil timeline in the future? Maybe one of the people they just saved from being deported will meet some woman that he was not supposed to meet and will have a baby that was never supposed to be born. And then that baby it will be the next Hitler who was never supposed to exist. And then uh, the whole future will be screwed. And maybe you yourself caused the, the evil future you're trying to prevent. So none of them even think of that possibility. So it defeats the whole purpose of the mission itself and so this was so ridiculous on so many levels and it made me realize there is no hope left for the show it will be stupid no matter what now to be continued